Yo, Smelly Randy here. Super psyched for this outdoor detour. Tomorrow I'll be driving north into Wyoming, doing some skiing at Jackson Hole and some winter backpacking in the Tetons. Let's go! So if you're wondering what's up with the intro video and why I'm in a dimly lit room with a headlamp on, uh, that's because the dreaded bomb cyclone blizzard came through Denver today. Uh, my office is closed at 10 a.m. and uh, I was home by 11.30 and we have not had power at home uh, since then and it's about 8.30 right now. Still no power. Good thing about being a camper is uh, we got plenty of headlamps and lanterns and I got some USB string lights strung up all over here. We got warm wool blankets keeping warm. So yeah, because of no electricity, I am taking the opportunity to uh, test out a new camping meal. Uh, this one is by Peak Refuel. Um, this is beef pasta marinara. Since the electricity's out, we're boiling some water right now and uh, we're gonna give this a shot. All right, dinner is served. Let's take a look inside here. Looks pretty good to me. Some nice big beef chunks in there. All right, let's give it a try. Mmm, that is good. I'm definitely taking one of these to the Tetons with me. Aha, the power just came back on. Watch this. Ah, not bad, right? No. If only we could get the damn fireplace to turn on. <laughs> Oh wait, we have heat now. Not gonna freeze tonight. All right, now that we have power back, thank God. Now I can show you a better look at this meal that I ate. That is actually very good. I'm actually packing this up so I can take it for lunch tomorrow before I uh, hit the road. I typically like to do pasta meals while camping and backpacking, so, uh, and this was plenty filling. I don't even know if I ate half of it, but uh, it's quite good. Uh, I would say definitely much better than the Mountain House spaghetti with uh, meat sauce. Um, so I'm definitely gonna keep buying more of these. And again, this is Peak Refuel Beef Pasta Marinara. I'll put a link down in the uh, video description. Well, it is 1.50 in the morning uh, after driving eight hours right after work. I'm finally up in the Bridger Teton National Forest with views of the Tetons. Uh, I'm currently actually stopped right at my favorite roadscape shot of the Tetons. I just got out and took pictures here. Pretty happy with uh, what I got. The mountains were a little bit more moonlit than I was hoping for. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens when I process them. Uh, but here's how they look. All right, it is 3.30 in the morning. I just got situated uh, in my truck here. I'm just getting the last heat out of the truck before I shut it down and crack the window. Definitely a little cramped this trip with uh, all the gear I have and skis in the truck uh, with my backpack here but yeah uh, I'm gonna get about two, 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 three hours of sleep before I get up uh, and get ready for sunrise and then go skiing so uh, yeah got some decent pictures in the last hour and so yeah that's a wrap calling it a night good night Oh, it is 10 till 7. It is so, so cold out. I wasn't gonna get up because I was rolling over 
and looking out the window and the mountains looked all cloudy, but I was very wrong because it actually looks like it's going to be a great sunrise. It's nice and clear. Uh, check it out. Oh, I am nice and warmed up now. I am at Teton Point, which is just a little pull-off uh, of 191. This view is uh, pretty great. Tetons look pretty great. So psyched to be back. There's just nothing better than waking up and seeing those mountains right there. drop-off right behind me is Corbett's Couloir. Uh, this is widely considered the uh, toughest run in North America. You see everyone's coming just to check it out. It is that gnarly. My last time here I, uh, I dropped into that 11 months after ACL surgery and it is pretty damn scary. You know what the best part about Jackson Hole is? They got a general store right here, and you can just walk in, buy cans of beer for $3.50, and sit out here and drink them. Oh. Beautiful bluebird day. I can get this open. Got plenty of runs in, went up the tram, went up uh, both the gondolas. That's about it for today. I'm gonna get out of here and try and go find a campsite, so. Well, I'm at the forest road that I was planning on skiing up to get to my campsite, which is up over on one of these hills, but uh, the road is actually kind of plowed. So we're gonna see just how far I can drive it and uh, figure out where to camp uh, from there. All right, getting ready to tour up to where I'm gonna camp tonight. Haven't had lunch yet, so taking care of the sandwich real quick. Since I was able to drive to this parking lot, I think the tour up should only be about 1.7 miles. I didn't want to do anything too crazy because it was so freaking cold last night. I wanted to be close tonight if anything happened or I was freezing my butt off. Plus I wanted a, a quick a quick ski down back to the parking lot uh, in the morning so I can get out and shoot sunrise somewhere so yep gonna finish eating finish packing and uh, we will head up the trail. All right, this looks like a pretty good spot. Flat forever. Good views. Whew. I've been trying to pack down the spot for my tent. Snow is so loose and light. All right, let's do a test here. <clears throat> 
All right, let's see if that did the trick. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Just stepped out of my ski and took one step and my ski boot went legitimately down to my knee. Oh, look at how my legs are right now. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, well, that's gonna cause some problems if I can't get this packed down enough. Oh. I've been trying to pack down the snow for a while now and it's like impossible. Everything's been sunburnt and it's crusty. Look at this. I don't know what to do with it. It won't pack. It won't pack at all. I don't know if I can pitch a tent in this if I can't pack it down. I mean, I can't even walk in it. Can't pack it down so I can walk on it. I'm wondering if I should just go back down, sleep in the truck. I wanted to get a bunch of pictures up here, but I'm better off sleeping in the truck and then just snowshoeing up here tomorrow with just the gear that I want to photograph. Well, shoot. Good news is I probably have an hour till sunset or till it sets behind the mountains. <sighs> huh. <sighs> I don't know what to do. I think maybe I should just ski back down to the truck, crash there. I've got beers down there. I even got fire. Well, at least I can ski down now. This is the fun part. What a bus. Skiing with a 50 pound pack. Whee! Oh, I'm pretty much at the parking lot already. Oh yeah, get some turns in. And I'm back. Well, that's it. I called it. Snow is garbage. Couldn't work with it. Disappointed in the snow. Disappointed in myself. Just super bummed. I should have my tent set up. Be comfortable. Should be taking pictures. The Tetons, because the sun is setting behind them right now. I don't know what I was supposed to do up there. I mean, I just couldn't pitch a tent in that. I don't know. Oh, back to the truck. Oh. I was just driving out of here and then I just got a good idea. Check this out. Look at that hill. Up at the uh, up at the top right there. I can see the grass. So that is what I will do tomorrow. So since the sun is already getting ready to set behind the Tetons right now, that's what I'll do tomorrow. Come back here, grab my snowshoes, backpack up on top of the hill. Should have no problem pitching a tent up there. And I should still have great views of the Tetons. Well, the good news is I got down in time to catch the sun setting behind the Tetons. So, yeah, I guess I'll take that. Can't win them all. I'll take this small victory. <laughs> so while my backpacking plans didn't 
come to fruition the way I had hoped. Uh, I have a plan for tomorrow to backpack. I was able to get some pictures of the sun setting behind the Tetons from uh, Cunningham Cabin area. And then I raced over to Snake River Overlook and got a couple more pictures um, when the sun actually did set. Got some good colors uh, and here are those. Ooh. It is about 7 a.m. About 30 minutes uh, before sunrise. And I'm just hiking out to Warm and Row, uh, which is a historic site. They got some old barns there. Make for some, uh, some great photographs. Looking like a perfectly clear morning. It is so freaking cold. Oh. Whew. The sun's getting ready to come up. I'm the only one out here, which I'm not really surprised. It's like three degrees out. It's so cold, I can feel my eyelashes freezing. Perfectly clear morning. As you can see the Tetons behind me and uh, the famous Mormon Row barn right there. So I'm uh, just about to wrap up shop here. Well, I put a full battery in my camera before I walked out here and it's already dead because it's just completely frozen. That's, that's how cold it is out here. Batteries freeze quick when it's this cold. So I'm gonna drive back into town. I gotta fill up gas and then I'll probably be just jumping around, hitting some photo spots uh, before I go uh, backpack today. So before I attempt to backpack today. So we'll see what happens. Made a quick stop in uh, Jackson Hole to fill up the gas tank. And uh, yeah, I figured I'd stop and get out and check out the, uh, the antler arch right here. Pretty cool. Time to head back into the park. Doesn't get a whole lot better than this. Tetons in the winter, not a cloud in the sky. Getting plenty of good shots here and around the valley. So I think pretty soon I'm gonna head back to where I uh, wanna camp at. But yeah, so far so good today. The weather really has been even better than I expected it to be. Normally there's a little cloud at least hovering above Grand Teton covering it up just enough to annoy you. But uh, yeah, it's been completely clear from sunrise till now. So just getting as many pictures as I can. Uh, starting to get all my gear laid out here so I can pack back up. But I gotta poop so bad. Ugh. I don't know what to do. All right, dookie successful. <laughs> oh, I kind of just squatted down behind one of these trucks, took care of business, uh, and then I, uh, I bagged it up. I'm gonna leave it just outside my truck until I get back tomorrow, and then I'll drive it out of here and dispose of it properly. Uh, normally, you would just dig a hole in the ground and go there and then pack out any uh, toilet paper waste that you would have, but since I can't get to the ground to dig a proper hole, uh, this is what you gotta do. Gotta pack it out. I know there's nothing uh, appealing about <laughs> dookie talk, but uh, it's a real thing that we gotta deal with in the outdoors. So I. Uh, Hope that sheds a little light and educates you on that. <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm bringing a bear bin in the winter, 
Uh, number one, I want something to sit on, so I use this as a stool. And number two, I'm not worried about bears. I'm worried about all the little critters that really want to eat your food. The raccoons, the coyotes, foxes, whatever. I think I've already lightened my load considerably, so uh, I think I'm going to take some luxury items. One of which is this Radiate Portable Campfire. It weighs a ton, but the the more I burn it, the uh, less weight it's going to be on the way down, so... Alright, I am feeling good. I'm feeling energized. The sun and the mountains helped. That English muffin sandwich I had for breakfast probably helped a lot too. Pooping probably helped a lot too. Uh, but yeah, I'm feeling great. It's only... let's see... It's only 12.30 right now, so I'm getting ready to head up and then I'll have like seven hours to, to shoot and get all the pictures I want get set up, get warm, uh, and prepare for a long and cold night. <laughs> All right, this is the official weigh-in. Uh, have a look. 45.7. That's way better than yesterday. <laughs> By like two or three pounds. <laughs> Change of plans already. <laughs> well, I didn't think I needed snowshoes for this, and then I got to this open field here just at the bottom of the hill I'm going up and uh, post hold my entire leg all the way up my thigh and I said you know what I should probably go back <laughs> and get the snowshoes so I'm ready this time I do hear water so I think there's a creek right right here so not sure how big it is or if I'll be able to even cross it but we'll see what happens here we go oh Here's the creek. Not bad. I can do this. Ugh. Nice. Now I just gotta go straight up the hill. Oh, I am gassed. Made it up to the top of the second hill. Probably only took me 20 minutes to get up here from the car, so in fact, you can see the parking lot right down there. But yeah, I think I figured out why it was so bare up here it looks like this is where all the elk or maybe just deer uh, hung out at so there is dookie everywhere it's dookie there it's dookie there so much dookie so much dookie so much more more in front of me 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 more over there it is just everywhere so now i might be camping on snow after all just to avoid the dookie <laughs> go figure <laughs> I think this is going to work out just fine. I am so damn glad I decided to come back out here and give this another shot. That right there is instant gratification at its finest. Oh. Yeah, time to set up the tent. So here's a look at the Outdoor Vitals one person Dominion tent. Uh, keep in mind this is a prototype but they did just launch it uh, the other day. So here it is without the rain fly. Uh, it is a rectangle but I don't think it's a perfect 
rectangle. I think it is tapered at the smaller end there just a little bit. On the inside here, uh, yeah, you'll see there's actually two pockets. This is a, a seam divider right here. So one pocket, two pocket. Uh, those are the only pockets in here. Uh, there is a little fabric loop right here. So you can throw a carabiner on there uh, and hook whatever you want. Lantern, headlamp, clothes, whatever. Just about all set up here. The tent is pitched. And I also just realized it is uh, St. Patrick's Day. But lucky for me, I brought a cooler. Oh, I even brought some sour goodies. I think I'll have one right now. What a treat. Happy St. Patty's Day, everyone. Oh, that's cold. Perfect. Tetons. Campsite. Ridge following to rock. I'm going to go see what's up there. Just about there. Holy cow. Look at that bull elk right there. Glad I just saw that single bull elk on the other side of this hill. Because I haven't seen any wildlife like the entire time I've been here, which has been a bummer. Uh, except for two bald eagles, that was it. No bison even? I don't, I don't know where they are. They're normally in the road, but I'm not seeing anything from up here either. All right, outdoor vitals. I am putting your new one person tent to the test. I know it's only a three season tent, but I am the king of winter camping in three season tents. The, uh, the low tonight, 10 degrees. Uh, and it was, it said seven yesterday, but it was three when I woke up. So <laughs> it'll probably be five when I wake up tomorrow morning, but this will be a, a good test for this thing. So I've got two new pieces of gear that I'm using today. The first is the Climate Insulated Static V Lite. Now I've always had an insulated Static V just for backpacking. Uh, this is just the light version. I believe it's just, uh, I don't know, a couple ounces lighter. Uh, but I believe it's the same dimensions, so I'm giving that a go. The second item is this quilted V-sheet made by Climate uh, specifically for the Static V sleeping pads. I don't think it matters whether it's the light or the normal version. This basically acts as a cover or a top sheet for your sleeping pad. Uh, adds a level of comfort and it's supposed to add to the R value as well. It's supposed to add up to two, I read. The Static V light sleeping pad, I have used this before. It's worked every bit as good as my normal Static V. Plus I was able to fold it in quarters. And for some reason I can't do that. I can't manage to do that with my normal Static V. I have to fold that in thirds, which I hate. Uh, so this has been great. The quilted V sheet I have not used yet. I'm gonna try this tonight. I don't know that I'm gonna recommend it for backpacking just cause it's an, an extra unnecessary item. It just adds weight, but I don't know. That could all change. I could have a total change of heart uh, after using it tonight. We'll see. So I'll let you know how this goes. All right, so here's the Climate Insulated Static V Light sleeping pad. It's gonna be a tight fit in this tent. Uh, this is typical for any one person tent. It's just been quite a while since I actually slept in a one-person tent so uh, in a way that's good because your sleeping pad won't move around at all all right and here is the sleeping pad with the quilted V sheet on it definitely feels comfy oh I almost forgot and this right here that so you can take your outdoor vitals pillow and 
and slide it in there. Yeah, not bad. I actually love that feature a lot. Uh, I usually tuck my inflatable pillow into the head of my sleeping bag uh, just to keep it in place, but with this, I don't even have to do that. That'll stay there all night. And because it is winter, uh, naturally I'm using my go-to winter bag, which is the uh, Outdoor Vitals Zero Degree Summit Down Bag. This is what kept me warm during the blizzard in Yosemite two months ago. This is what kept me warm in the Grand Canyon when it was 20 all night. So I'll probably be fully dressed. Actually, there's no probably about it. I'm going to be fully dressed tonight because uh, I, I am a little bit worried about how cold it's going to get. But uh, I've got enough layers that... I feel pretty confident I'm gonna be pretty toasty all night. Uh, I might boil some water up and throw it in my water bottle and then throw that in the uh, the foot of my sleeping bag, just as an extra luxury measure. So that's it. All right, so before it gets too dark, I wanna show you how I sleep when I'm winter backpacking. So I've already showed you my trusty zero degree down sleeping bag. If the low is over 20, I can usually sleep in that thing with hardly any clothing on. With the low tonight being 10 and probably lower than that, um, I'm gonna be sleeping pretty much, yeah, actually fully dressed. So right now, currently, I've got on some darn tough wool socks. Uh, as soon as the sun goes down, I'm gonna be putting these heavy-duty Carhartt socks over top of them, and I'll be sleeping in those. Uh, I also have on these Under Armour Cold Gear three-quarter length tights. Uh, as soon as the sun goes down, I'm gonna be putting these full long johns uh, over top of those and sleeping in that. I'll probably sleep with the pants on uh, as well over top of both of those layers. Uh, currently I'm wearing just a long sleeve polyester hiking shirt uh, and then my Arcteryx Adam LT hoodie. Um, when the sun goes down I'll be putting back on my Outdoor Vitals uh, synthetic down jacket and I'll be sleeping in all of that. Uh, I also do have this uh, Outdoor Research hard shell that uh, I probably won't be sleeping in just because it's a little stiff. I'll, it'll be in my sleeping bag because uh, anything that I'm potentially going to wear in the morning, I want to keep warm. So that'll probably be at the foot of my sleeping bag uh, getting warm. Uh, and then for gloves, I've got these cheap Rosgnol fleece gloves. Um, and then when it starts getting cold and I want to do some night shooting, uh, I've got these outdoor research gloves that I can put over top of these. And then over top of these and these, I've got my Dakine mittens, which I think are, I think they're called boss mittens. So layers, 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 layers. That's the name of the game. Uh, and that is how I keep warm outside when I'm shooting at night and while I sleep. Oh, and another thing, uh, I will probably be wearing this to bed as well. Uh, it's important to have something on your head. Um, a lot of times I'll just wear this buff and I might actually end up just wearing this tonight instead of this heavier cap. Um, but it's important to keep your, your top of your head and your ears warm. Uh, because a lot of time that's what is that's like the only part of your body that's exposed while you're tucked up tight in your sleeping bag. So uh, yeah, that just about covers it. Uh, one more thing I wanted to clarify uh, and just touch on is that sleeping bag ratings, um, they're rated based on survival. So if your sleeping bag is zero degrees, uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to be warm and toasty if it's zero degrees at night. Uh, that means you're going to survive. And you better believe that you're probably going to be cold and miserable all night. I think the typical rule of thumb is that 
uh, 20 degrees above your sleeping bag rating is the lowest temperature that you should be using your sleeping bag in unless you're doing other things like being fully dressed in multiple layers <laughs> while you sleep at night. Um, I could probably get away not wearing as much clothing but when you're sleeping in the wilderness uh, there's no reason to not take the precautions to make sure you're as comfortable and warm as humanly possible when you're sleeping at night. So uh, I'm wearing just about all my layers tonight um, because it is gonna get really cold again. So that's it. The sun has just set behind the Tetons, but I am loving all these clouds down here that will surely change color once the the sun finally gets down below the horizon in about 20 minutes. Check this out. You guys are gonna love this. Oh, my nose got fried. Hold on, check this out. I got a fire. I got a fire. Whoo! She's cooking. This is the uh, Radiate portable campfire. Uh, they're heavy as all hell, but this was my luxury item uh, that I decided to bring up here since my pack was lighter than it was yesterday. So I figured, <laughs> why not fill that space with fire? So yeah, these things are pretty great. They actually get a decent flame going. Uh, I think they're supposed to last for like four hours maybe. Uh, and then when you want to put it out, just plop the lid right back on and it's out. I bought a couple of these because of the fire bans in Colorado pretty much every year now. And I think it's pretty much, as long as it has like an on and off switch, um, then it is allowed. And you might have to uh, haggle with, the, uh, with a ranger about it, but it kind of does have an on and off switch. I mean, you just, it's on, it's off, it's on. It's off. So, yeah, I think it's great. It's, <laughs> look at this thing. <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna warm up. Just running around trying to get everything done, trying to take all the pictures, get the fire going, get my dinner ready, take video and photos at the same time with that camera. Whew. Pretty good sunset. I am ready to eat. Oh. Mmm. Yep. It's ready. Nice and hot. Mmm. -mm -mm. It's a good fire, huh? These things are sweet. Oh, this is the life. Toasty warm. I got a beer. I got a fire. I got lasagna, I got the mountains, I got the Tetons, things are looking up. <laughs> Good morning. Oh. Well, I was warm and cozy for pretty much, for most of the night. Um, at about 3.30, I woke up and my toes were pretty damn frozen. And yeah, it's pretty hard to sleep when your toes are frozen. So I struggled with that for the next three hours. Uh, until I got up so uh, rest of my body good but uh, I don't know what it is about toes but they're uh, very hard to keep warm when you're camping in the winter uh, I didn't bring my down booties I do have some of those uh, I probably should have brought them but I didn't so uh, it is just past 
sunrise and it's nice and clear behind me. Uh, however, it's nice and cloudy over in the east where the sun is rising. So that's why the sun hasn't hit the, uh, the mountains yet. And God, I wish it was clear in the east because I need that sun bad. Well, if I can't have coffee and I can't have sunrise, then there's not a whole lot of good reasons for me to stick around. So I'm packing up, about to put the fire out, finish packing and uh, get back down to my truck, which is still there. So that's always good. <laughs> oh man, all right. It only took me 13 minutes to hike down from I was camping right there, hiked down the ridge, down that hill, and I'm back. So, whew, warming up the truck. Need to get some coffee in me and some breakfast. Oh, I literally just had the truck in reverse and I almost forgot my dookie bag. <laughs> oh, very sad to be leaving these mountains. Had great weather all weekend, <laughs> aside from the cold. Uh, got some good skiing in, did some skinning or touring, uh, and then even did some snowshoeing. So, pretty damn good weekend. I'm gonna head home now. Uh, I'm gonna stop at one of my favorite photo spots real quick, uh, and then I'm gonna probably stop in Dubois and grab breakfast, so. Well, I finally found all the buffalo hanging out up on this hill. Aside from these and the one elk and two bald eagles, that's the only wildlife I've seen. Here it is, my favorite view, roadscape view in the Tetons. Ah. All right, I'm making a quick pit stop in the small town of Dubois, Wyoming. Uh, after last night, I figured I'd treat myself to a proper breakfast. So I'm over here at the uh, Cowboy Cafe. Time to go get some scrambled eggs and bacon. pushing it. I wasn't really paying attention to the gas tank and I should have been. Uh, I got 27 miles or 24 minutes to the next gas station and I am running really low. Uh, that needle is moving down quick. Oh god, eight minutes away. 7.4 miles. I'm at least kind of within walking distance. <laughs> oh God, the needle is on the empty line. Oh God, I think I might make it. 1.6 miles. Woo! Come on, baby. Oh, thank God. Yes! Woo! Oh my god. Oh, I've never been so happy to see you. Oh my gosh. Oh. Let's never do that again. Jeez. Such an idiot. All right, back on the road again. As soon as I realized there was a realistic chance that I would run out of gas in the middle of Wyoming, oh, uh, dude, my stomach just dropped so hard. The last 10 minutes of that drive were miserable. But I am now three hours and 25 minutes from Denver, from home, and uh, this one tank of gas should get me there no problem, so. Here we go. Oh 
man, back in Denver, finally, after eight hours straight driving, <laughs> one running out of gas scare. <laughs> but uh, it's 50 degrees and beautiful, so it's good to be back. Uh, I wanted to cover a couple of things before I end the video. Uh, a couple of people asked me some questions already um, after they were watching my Instagram stories at Outdoor Detour. The first thing was regarding my, uh, my frozen water bottle. Um, to avoid that, what I normally do is boil water, throw it in a Nalgene, put a sock over it, and throw it at the foot of my sleeping bag. That way it keeps my feet warm for quite a while actually, and then I have water that's already thawed out uh, for the morning to make coffee or breakfast with. Uh, I usually do that. Couldn't find my Nalgene this trip, so I had all my water in Gatorade bottles, and I just didn't trust the Gatorade bottles to handle boiling water. So that's why I had the frozen water and couldn't make coffee this morning. Uh, the other thing I wanted to cover was the portable campfire that I used. Uh, someone wanted more info about it. So again, this is it. Uh, it's made by a company called Radiate. It is nothing but uh, soy wax and recycled paper. Um, and it lasts, in my experience, it's lasted over three hours. They say three plus hours. I think I've gotten at least four out of this one. Um, it weighs four pounds, so it's quite a bit to take with you backpacking, but uh, for nights like last night, it was certainly worth it. Um, so yeah, that I picked that up on Amazon. They come in one pack or two packs. Uh, and then they also have standard or eucalyptus aroma. So um, I'll put the link to those down in the description. So, so yeah, I think that about covers it. Uh, it's good to be back in Denver. Now I gotta go home and pack. So until next time, happy trails, y'all.